Hello, and welcome to a new video of the series Element Focus. In today's video, we will explain the key grid element. First, we're going to use Factory Layout 1, where we're going to see a key grid, which is basically a normal keyboard, but it's equivalent. We are in C major in this example, and all the notes are shown are the notes that are in scale, which in this case is C major. And the more hidden or shallow notes are the notes that are off scale. Now we're going to see how the key grid element really works. So we're going to open layout three. On the element itself, there are three main notes, fundamental, third, and the fifth note. In smaller and colored, there are notes in the scale, but they are less dominant. So if we play all the colored notes, for example, you can see that every five semitones, it repeats in the vertical axis. The gray notes are the notes off scale, and we can also decide to remove the chromatic notes where we have only the notes in the scale that are displayed. We can also change the scale. For example, um, E sharp does not exist, so let's take F sharp instead in the harmonic minor. So as you see, we can directly start playing and be sure that we are in the right scale. So let's head over to the lab and go to layout three and pull. So when we see the element and we switch to preview mode, we can see the changes in real time. Over here, we have the MPE mode, which we can activate or deactivate. There is an entire video that we've created about MPE and its capabilities, which you can check below. In the line offset, this is what will allow us to model the key grid. So by default, the line offset is five semitones. These notes are equivalent to these. This allows us to play vertically and horizontally, which gives us more possibilities than just a keyboard, which has basically horizontal logic. So by deactivating show offset and choosing another degree, for in this example, four as a degree, we can use four fingers vertically. We can see here that the different scales proposed, some of them are not actually proposed in the lab. You can choose the root note and the octave. You can also manage the octave directly on the E-ray touch with the buttons plus and minus. But it will only be temporary until you power cycle the E-ray touch. To have it permanently, you have to save it and by pushing the layout directly from the lab. So then there's a pressure, which corresponds to the channel after touch. From there, you can change the minimum and maximum. How much of the after touch we can control? How much are we pressing, basically? In the Clissendo section, this allows you to slide between two notes, but you must not forget that the pitch bend has to be the same as the instrument. So let's say here we use Piano Tech 7, and you have to check in the settings that the pitch bend corresponds to 12. Here we set it at minus 1200 and plus 1200. So back to the E-Ray Lab, here's the vibrato. We can increase its strength to have less effort to play with. But by default, the note will automatically return to its initial note after a vibrato, and we can change the speed of this movement. And let's say if we set it at none, it will not return to the initial note and stay pitch bended. Okay, so let's talk about the control change axis. First, the pressure axis. This one is an additional axis, similar to aftertouch, but in CC, which is control change. Again, we can set the minimum and maximum range. So we have the X and Y axis. Remember that you can always see a description of what you're pointing with the mouse or hovering on the mouse in the learn section at the bottom left corner. 
So we see the difference between the relative and the absolute axis. And as usual, X is horizontal, Y is vertical. And the difference between absolute and relative is quite simple, actually. Basically, absolute axes have their initial value at one end and the max value at the other end. Relative axes, on the other hand, always start at the same value that you set in this location. The value will then move from there depending on your movement on this axis. In the Style tab, you have different degrees. Here is the first degree. For example, we can change the color, make a linear gradient, change its brightness, and the duration of the brightness change. As for most other elements, we have three types of animation. The click, which corresponds to the initial triggering, the release, which is quite explanatory by itself, and the slide, which is a continuous feedback of the pressure, in this case where we put as halo. So now, by holding the bass clef on the touch, we see that this element is MPE. This is the case for the first six alt layouts. You can see there that this key grid is on channel 4, while the alt layout key grid is MPE. So let's go ahead and try that with pigments, for example. And now... We want to change the scale. Switch to a G Dorian and remove the off scale notes. The problem, though, is that the release is not very long, so on the DAW, inside the plugin pigments, we will increase the release. To do this, don't forget to activate the MPE in your plugin, but also in the preferences to have activated the MPE port. Now in the E-Ray Lab, we have created the MPE split, which allows you to recognize your E-Ray Touch as two devices by default, one MPE and one non-MPE. The advantage of having two devices is that you can activate the transmission of MPE information to your digital audio workstation without risking that it interferes with the non-MPE elements. And here it is. If you have any questions, please write them below in the comment section. Thank you.